This is the Rosiski settlement. It's got the cheapest housing. It's hard to believe this is not a remote village. This is actually the center of the Krasnodar region of Russia. Everything is so messy. These neighborhoods will turn into ghettos very soon. It's impossible to walk a dog here. It's impossible to do anything here. They built houses but forgot to build roads. It's like a swamp here. After rain, sewer water gets mixed with the mud. The sloppiest housekeeper's toilet is cleaner than the street. There's nothing for kids here. These are stray dogs? You can't imagine how they bite. We are so scared of them. This is ghetto for real. Do people really live in basements? Local authorities don't care about the consequences at all. There are pits, potholes and puddles around me. You might think I am in a remote village or some slums that have never seen asphalt roads, or that tanks were passing through here, or the city was shelled. No, it is a village during peacetime. It has a really patriotic name, Rosiski meaning Russian. It is a part of the city of Krasnodar, the administrative center of quite a wealthy region of Russia. This village has a patriotic name, Rosiski meaning Russian. It is located inside the Krasnodar municipality, the administrative center of Krasnodar Krai in the very south of Russia. The Krasnodar region is a third of Russia's region by population. There are around 5.6 million people living here. It is here in the Krasnodar region where Sochi is located, the city that hosted the 2014 Olympics. This street is named after Paris. The neighbor should have been thinking the roads in France look like this. Actually, this street should have been named after its roads, broken, or the Venice street. After the rain, the road looks more like a canal. And this is not the only example. The locals told me that around 15 roads here need urgent repair. Those are not just streets with pits. In fact, the whole road turns into a swamp after the rain, making it impossible to move around. People were filing complaints, signing petitions, and eventually appealed to the court. I've come to Rosiski to see for myself how this pit patriotic village lives, and why they built houses here, but not roads. Tell me in the comments if you expected to see this kind of roads in Russia. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video. To get around the streets somehow, although it's hard to call these streets, people have been throwing construction waste in the mud. Some bricks, some planks, they don't always help actually. And sometimes it is still hard to walk. It is an obstacle course, I swear. Hello, how are you doing? Great. How do you like these roads with your experience? <laughs> with my experience, I'd level everything and plant some flowers here. Why haven't they done it? How long has it been like this? It's been around eight years. Eight years? How can you ride a bike here? There's no road. I am used to it. So, it's not a problem. So, all in all, you're good? No, I wish it was better. They say they will make a track here. But honestly, I don't believe them. They don't do a thing. We've called them so many times asking to pump the water out. They pumped it out once, then the water came back. Every time it rains, the whole road is flooded. You can't walk a dog. You can't do anything. Even to reach the bus stop, you need to put plastic bags on your shoes. Otherwise, you won't make it. How can you be wearing white sneakers here? What's your secret? You must know the way. So there are some secret paths here? Yeah. There are some little paths, you know. I came to Rosiski the same day Russia sent its troops to Ukraine, under the tagline, we don't leave ours behind. However, the Russian government has left ours behind in Rosiski long ago. At the same time, even the locals see nothing wrong about it. You see, they have to deal with Ukraine now, and maybe then, they'll have resources left for your village. These are not the same things. There's a big difference. You know? Of course I do. That's it. This is a domestic issue, and the other one is a geopolitical one. You know what they say. Stay out out of this, for now. Rosiski have no normal roads, no sidewalks. Even the smallest rain makes the roads and sidewalks turn into muddy puddles. In bad weather, locals find alternative paths or build their own little bridges and crossings. Wow, this is your way to repair the road. We are filming your heroic deed. Heroic deed, you say. But what's the point anyway? What do you mean, what's the point? At least we can cross now. The same thing every year. 
Hello, hello, are you a YouTuber? No. Yes, nice to meet yeah. you. Are you from the local precinct? No, from a different one. How can you keep your shoes so clean here? You know your ways around? Honestly, this is a miracle that some people can have clean shoes here. Because when you look at this, it seems impossible. People have to cover the holes with some construction ways to survive here. They use some old blocks to make sidewalks to be able to walk here somehow. And it all looks... I've been everywhere in the world and I'm telling you, this looks like the poorest African countries. I would have never thought this is a wealthy region of a great country. If you take a turn, there will be less dirt. But you realize the horrors of this kind of development, when windows are facing each other, when there is no space between the buildings, no green areas, nothing. Around a year and a half ago, residents of the village published an open letter demanding that the roads be repaired. Among the addresses, there are seven officials, starting from a city council chairman, ending with Putin. The letter was signed by over 2,000 people, but it didn't help. Now the residents have appealed to the court. We've got enough arguments. I mean, a road is a road. It should be graded. It should be maintained according to the standards. It should be repaired. We are now in the street of military glory. The part of the road you can see now is not subject to repair, neither to grading, according to the officials. That means that the road won't be repaired in the next five years minimum. The only thing we achieved was that a special car would come to pump the water out of these huge puddles. There's hardly a single road here that doesn't need repair. The residence letter contained 15 most broken streets. Taking into account the size of the village, those are almost all the roads around here. Well, they are not really roads. They are holes, puddles and pits. Road facilities should include storm drain systems, sidewalks, sidewalk landscaping. When we have all that stuff, we will be able to say that we've got the road facilities. So far, we don't. Krasnodar City Administration acts as a defendant, along with the Department of Transport and Road Management and the Center of Traffic and Transport Monitoring. According to the lawyers and activists, at the trial, officials claimed that the roads in Rosyjsky met the state standards. We have submitted a formal request to the public bodies that are empowered to impose administrative liability, to the traffic police. They gave an exhaustive answer saying they examined those roads, those streets, recorded all the violations, all the cases of not meeting the standards, and drew up a report about administrative liability. We all have the proofs, and we saw those roads with our own eyes. So at the trial we said, Your Honor, it is an address of respect. If you don't believe us, if you don't believe the plaintiff, we suggest that you go and check those roads yourself. Their quality does not meet the state standards. Walking in Rosijski is like an endless obstacle course. For example, we've got some concrete plates here, and then you have to take the path, or alternatively, you can walk in the mud, if you don't mind getting your shoes dirty. But looking at the street, I understand that I will eventually get my shoes dirty anyway. Somebody left a used diaper here, excuse me. So there's not only natural waste here, but also household waste. Because, as you can see, there's a lot of rubbish in the streets. It's everywhere, in the sidewalks. Oops, excuse me, there's no sidewalks here, obviously. Hello? We are holding the best courtyard competition. How do you like it here? Is this your best neighborhood? Yes, it is, for sure. Have you filmed the dirt roads over there? We filmed them, yes. How come they are like this? How come? Who is to blame? For the roads like this? Yes, you as the local elder. City administration. By the way, they built houses but forgot to build roads. Old men say there used to be a river over here. There's still a river here, in the place of the road. It is a river. All the water stays there. So how do you live here? We just live. There are no storm drains. The storm drains are not the problem. The sewer water is coming out. That's why it smells so bad? Yes, so it's sewer water. Exactly. When the wind blows this direction, it smells so bad. Streets of Rosijski are flooded from above and from below. The weather is more or less fine in the southern village. Village, but the public utilities are not. At the corner of the house, the sewerage is often seething too. As soon as they are out of order, it's a mess. It all stinks. This water, 
After rain, sewer water gets mixed with the mud. There were rains and the water reached the entrance. In summer it happens all the time. The water was all the way here and everywhere there, up until there, where the girl is, until the first step of the stairs. That's how much water there was here, up until that entrance. It was all water. And this water stinks, I see. It looks like a swamp. After the rain, you feel that smell. Roughly speaking, the sloppiest housekeeper's toilet is cleaner than the street, and it smells less. Let me briefly explain to you what this settlement is. Basically, it is one of the districts of the city of Krasnodar. Locals are formally registered in Krasnodar, and it is only 8 kilometers to the city center. First, houses were built here in the 1960s. In 1977, this territory was proclaimed an urban district settlement. That's when it got its patriotic name. In the 1990s, this area was given over for private development. And what is private development in the south of Russia? It is illegal housing and chaos. It would be okay if people illegally built single-family homes, but they built apartment blocks instead. Some of them have got a legal status later. Some have remained unfinished, and some were torn down. Behind my back you can see an unfinished building. It should have been a seven-story house. The court found the construction illegal and ordered that it should be demolished, but the developer disappeared. So residents of the settlement tried to demolish it by their own strength. And that's a good example of what is going on here, because every spare piece of land gets an illegal building, so we can't speak about any architectural style here, or smart use of space, or urban planning. Everything is about draining money here. People only think about making money quickly. They build apartment blocks on waste ground and sell it to people who don't understand what they are buying and don't understand what will happen to their real estate. The developers will run away with the money to develop another potato field in the suburbs of Krasnodar. Since the village was built spontaneously, without following any rules, there are problems here not only with the road, but also with electricity, gas and water supply. The existing capacity is not enough for all the residents. In 2010, the official population of the settlement was around 700 people. Now, it's more than 10,000 people. And people keep coming here and buying houses here. I wonder how realtors promote these houses. According to this advertisement, it is a dream housing. House prices here start from 63,000 $882. Only houses in collective gardens are cheaper to buy in Krasnodar. Now let's take a look at apartment prices in Krasnodar. The cheapest studio apartment costs $30,162 and it is situated in Rosiski. Maybe people choose cheap housing close to the city center, hoping that soon the civilization will also reach this place. Otherwise, I don't see how anyone would voluntarily move here. These are slums. This is a ghetto for real. How did you buy an apartment here? It was like an investment. We don't actually live here. We just invested our money like this. We live in a normal neighborhood ourselves. Good job, man. Good job. One hand washes the other, as the saying goes. Yes, that's how they built it. Now we are living here. And they are saying, you are the ones who bought it. Of course we did. We needed a place to live, after all. I wonder how people buy apartments seeing all this. It didn't start yesterday. I was short on money. That's why I had to buy an apartment here. It's a temporary accommodation. It's the cheapest accommodation in Krasnodar, isn't it? This is the cheapest, yes. Well, some apartments are cheaper, those in basements. What do you mean, in basements? I don't know how to explain. Like that window over there, can you see? So people live in basements? Yes, they do. <laughs> Why are you laughing? People need a place to live. Some of them have kids. It wasn't a joke when the locals told me about apartments in basements. Local developers have come up with an idea of how to make more on cheap housing here. They place some apartments below the ground floor. There are even some kindergartens located in basements. I have never seen anything like this before. People really live here. And all the basements in these houses, excuse me, ground floors, are inhabited. Why did they make basements residential? They should have made it for cars. You want more cars? You don't have enough already? No, you've got me wrong. Don't twist my words. For cars to go there. Oh, you mean underground parking? Yes, I see now. And you were like, don't you have enough cars? There are too many cars. Children could have played here. The playground was destroyed. Yes, true. There are no swings for kids. Who destroyed it? Teenage boys and girls. Those who don't like kids. They were swinging and broke the swings. They've broken it all. <laughs> 
This is a usual situation for residential development in Russia. Somebody gives permission to build an enormous amount of houses, practically in an open field. Then half of the houses turn out to be illegal. They were built illegally. You may ask, how can one illegally build a whole house? It is not built overnight, it takes time to build a house, so somebody has to take care of it. But they turn a blind eye to it. Somebody accepts these houses, makes them legal, helps to sell them, to put them into operation. As a result, thousands and thousands of people become victims. People who buy apartments here, because they don't think about it enough, they don't understand the consequences of such a purchase, or maybe they simply have no money and no place to live, so they move here. Now the officials look at it and they say, it's people's fault. Why did they buy apartments here in the first place? Of course, it's partly their fault. I agree. But the bigger fault is that of the government that gave permission to build all these blocks. Because it is impossible to build anything without the officials' approval, without their blind eye. So everyone knows everything and they benefit from it. As a result of corruption, lawlessness and the fact that the local administration can't care less, districts like this appear. Who has to solve those problems? Of course, it should be those people who let this urban development crime happen. Why did you decide to come here? I just did. You came to Krasnodar and you decided to visit our village? Yes, we did. Well done, please. Your video on YouTube won't solve our problems. You should talk to the city administration. How can I talk to them? Please, why have you bought an apartment here at all? What else could I do? But you saw this neighborhood. Okay, it is cheap to buy an apartment here. But you saw this place. I am retired. It was cheap. Also, I came to buy it in summer. It was cleaner in summer. It was dry in summer. And then, it's not the first year the village looks like this. Not the first year. It's been eight years. How could I know it? I came here. I am retired. I don't have much money. Realtors brought me here. And that was it. In order to get proper housing, one needs to stay here for a while, to learn more about different districts. We are very naive. You know, we were born in the Soviet Union. I recall those days very often. I reminisce about them. It would have been impossible there? Impossible, I guess. By the way, there was a soft cause here, a state farm. They were fine here. They grew things here, plums or something like that. And now there are houses everywhere. Now there's dirt everywhere. This sweet lady turned out to be a subscriber of my channel. First, she asked me to deal with the issue of the village, to appeal to the administration of Krasnodar, and then suddenly she chastised me for my video about Murmansk. I lived in Murmansk for many years, and you only showed a little piece of it, just a half-destroyed barrack, that's what you showed. Why? It is such a beautiful city, why didn't you show it? Why couldn't you show the beauty of Murmansk? Look, people in Krasnodar say the same thing. Why do you show those roads in the outskirts when the city center is so beautiful? But you live here. On one hand, you are asking me to show it to help solve this issue. But when I do the same thing in Murmansk, you say, why do you show the bad part? According to your video, the whole city of Murmansk is like this. I was hurt to hear that. No, according to my video, I showed the problem of the city. Not always. Sometimes you show beautiful cities. You show the beautiful part of the city and only then the ugly one. But in Murmansk you only show the ugly things. That hurt me so much. Murmansk is such a beautiful city. When was the last time you were in Murmansk? It's only getting better. When was the last time you were there? Let me think. I left it in 1990... In 1993, I believe. You haven't been there for 30 years. Why? 27. You haven't been there for 27 years. And you are defending the city now, thinking it's a beautiful place. And I've been there many times, and I can tell you that Murmansk is shabby. Okay, it's shabby, but not so much. Not the way you showed it. Those are stray dogs? Yes, they bite so much, you don't know. We are so scared of them. Be careful. This is a typical story. On one hand, she is complaining about her village. She wants me to film all their problems to show it to people, to attract attention, to help solve them. But she is mad somebody dared to show the problems of Murmansk.
Although she left Murmansk 27 years ago, for some reason she thinks that Murmansk is a great city that you can't say anything bad about. And when I do videos about neighborhoods like this, you get the same feedback from people from Krasnodar. Like, don't show this, why do you show this? They want me to show the beautiful city center. But in reality, these things should be showed first. Because if we neglect it, if we don't pay attention to it, the problems will never be solved. This is a disgrace to Krasnodar. This whole situation is a disgrace to the Krasnodar region. The fact that people are abused like this, that they let this urban development crime happen. You might think that since the housing is illegal in this village, the roads must be illegal too. In fact, all the 15 streets included in the lawsuit are listed as roads of the city of Krasnodar. That means they formally belong to the municipality. But the municipality doesn't care about them. And Krasnodar is not a poor city. In 2021, the average salary in Krasnodar was around $660. And the budget of Krasnodar for 2022 is $720 million. $62 million were allocated for road facilities in Krasnodar in 2022. In December, the press service of the city administration announced that four streets in different districts of the city would be repaired. Rosiski is not one of them. Krasnodar also also received $82 million as part of the national project Safe Roads. Rosiski was more fortunate here. One street has already been repaired. On paper, they had been repaired long ago. We collected money ourselves to repair these roads. Manholes are falling through. There are already holes in the ground. This road was repaired just a month ago. There are no storm drains here. They paved the road, but along the road there's mud, puddles, etc. Pits. Nothing has really changed. Yes, the road is paved now. That's good. But unfortunately, this program does not imply installing drain systems. Maybe it could have been provided, but it wasn't. It could have been the first step to create a drain system in the Rosiski settlement. Anastasia is a journalist of a local newspaper. She covers the situation in Rosiski in her articles. Now she is writing about the lawsuit. She is doing this because the problems of the village affect her own life. A few years ago, Anastasia and her husband decided to move closer to her relatives. They were on a budget, so the choice was basically between the two areas around here, Rosiski and Muzikalny. We compared them and came to the conclusion that Rosiski was better, because the buildings are not as dense here. When you look out of your window, at least you don't see Okay, maybe here it is not as visible. But yeah, buildings are not super close to each other. So in theory, if some things are improved, if the roads are fixed, if some trees are planted, it will be livable. A new school is being built now. There will be a kindergarten nearby. So in theory, maybe in five years, it will be okay here. Two years ago, I walked around Krasnodar's district Muzikalny, and I was shocked. It was a true ghetto. It seems that Rosiski will face the same fate. The Muzikalny district. I've actually included it in my list of the worst residential districts in Russia. I can see that nothing really changes here over the years. There are no roads as it used to be, puddles as they used to be. Children go to school through all this dirt. And this is a permanent state of this district. The houses were built many years ago. But the surroundings stay the same. It stays like this because nobody is held accountable. Neither the developers nor the authorities approving all the construction here. Despite the absence of any infrastructure, as a result, crazy human anthills appear in former potato fields. People irresponsibly buy cheap apartments here and then spend years and years living in this environment. They use these roads to drive to work, these sidewalks to go to school. Their cars can hardly pass here. This is 2022, the Krasnodar region, one of the richest regions in Russia. And this is what is happening here. It has been like this for many years, and the end is not in sight. All these puddles. How do people live here, with these roads? Well, I manage. <laughs> You even managed to wear white sneakers here. Yeah, I tuck in the laces and it's fine. The roads are completely broken. When it's raining, you don't see the holes. If you go to Esenina Street or Angarskaya Street, your car will sink after the rain. 
My car's bumper was ripped off multiple times. Taxi drivers in Krasnodar are always reluctant to take orders from Zikalny and Rusiski. The route to pick up passengers is a difficult quest for taxi drivers and a strength test for their cars. After it's been raining, drivers prefer to cancel all the rides. I cancel because it's impossible to drive on these roads, especially in the Rusiski settlement. It's not that they don't have asphalt there, their roads are basically dirt. A passenger car won't pass there. And there are no buses or trams here. Talking about public transport, there are only old minibuses here. Super hard to get on. Minibuses in Russia are called Marshrutki or Marshrutka. They replace regular buses on some routes in Russian cities. Due to their small size, they are always crowded. Passengers are packed like sardines. Drivers of these vans are known to regularly violate traffic rules, increasing the risk of an accident. In the morning, a marshrutka can fit, I don't know, 100 people. They are packed. We don't have trams here. We don't have trolley buses. All we have here is minibuses. When the roads are icy, minibuses cannot go there. They start leaning. That's scary. People have to go to the city center not only for work or shopping. There's practically no social infrastructure in the village. Anastasia told us that, according to the general plan, Rosiski was supposed to have 10 kindergartens. In reality, there's only one. Anastasia takes her daughter to the center of Krasnodar every morning. All the way back and forth, including traffic jams, takes around three hours in the morning and in the evening. There are no facilities for kids here. The playgrounds are, well, you see, there are no kids clubs, no sports. There's nothing. No kindergartens either. There are a few private kindergartens here. They are cheap, but they are located in basements. The most talked about street is the street of military glory. Even the traffic police was trying to get it repaired. In 2021, they found the road dangerous and appealed to the court. The court stated that the local authorities were violating the law by not taking actions and ruled that the roads should be repaired, storm drains installed and electricity provided, but it didn't help either. Only two years later, residents of Rosiski got a little piece of hope that one day it would be safe to walk and drive here. In 2019, the city administration of Krasnodar ordered a reconstruction project that was worth 2.3 million dollars. The authorities said that there wasn't enough money in the budget. Here is one of the most horrible streets. When the snow melted down, there was no road here. There was a literal sea here. Big, huge puddles. Well, this is an urban development crime taking place in Krasnodar. We are in the outskirts, there used to be fields here. People used to grow potatoes, corn or something else. Then private housing came to this area. First detached houses and then blocks of flats. What has happened? You take a simple field and build the cheapest houses there. No infrastructure. And I'm not even talking about cool public spaces. Good schools and kindergartens, cultural and business centers. I'm talking about basic road facilities. Look, the houses are inhabited, but there are no roads. Every day people walk in this mud to the nearest bus station just to be able to leave from here. This is terrible. It's terrible because it should be forbidden to sell apartments when there is no infrastructure in the area. I remember my trips to Dubai and different cities in Morocco. I was amazed at the fact that before building anything, they built roads first. They start with the infrastructure. They even launched tram services before building the houses. Here, in Krasnodar, their only goal is to make money as soon as possible and quickly leave. I mean, the developers of this bleep leave, and Krasnodar residents stay and live in these conditions for years. There's no way out for them. Locals asked me to go to the administration of Krasnodar and ask the officials when the roads in Rusiski would be repaired. I would also like to know how they even allowed the construction of houses without any infrastructure. But unfortunately, the city administration refused to talk to my crew. Is this an illegal building? Why is it like this? It is considered illegal, but people invested in it. People invested in it. They say the developer is in prison now. 
no heating, no elevator. Those who gave permission to build it here should be in prison, right? Yes, they were paid to do it, of course. The trash is not taken out, is it? There are piles of trash here. It is taken out, but not so often, right? There was no sewage there. They've been fighting to get it. Now there is sewage. Before they poured waste into a pit, they had to fight to get it. It's common in this neighborhood. Like in Musicalny. Yes. Somebody made a fortune and left. Now they are chilling in the Canary Islands, and we are here. It's another illegal construction behind my back. Judging by the broken windows, it is going to be demolished. Some construction works here, some dirt there, some trash over there, more trash over there. Everything is messed up. This is Rosiski, a neighborhood of Krasnodar, the cheapest one. It's hard to believe this is happening not in a country where slums are common. No, it is happening in the south of Russia, in Krasnodar, the administrative center of this region. The Krasnodar Krai, one of the wealthiest regions of Russia. I've been to many places and I have never seen housing like this. And all these buildings are approved by the local authorities. I have never seen anything like this. It's terrible, it's disgusting. The thought that all our cities may turn into something like this is scaring me. What's more, don't forget that it is an issue for the future. More or less talented and industrious people will leave the village for better places. So only those who have nowhere else to go will stay here. And the neighborhood will soon turn into a ghetto, into slums, like the ones you could see in Africa. This will be a problem for the following decades. It's like a mine planted by today's officials the city administration, the regional administration, and all those who made it possible. The problem is that it never stops. If you think this happened 10 years ago, and now people are trying to fix it, you're wrong. You can be driving the highway along the fields next to Krasnodar. There are houses being built there without any infrastructure around. People buy cheap apartments there without thinking. Cheap, but they cost money, and it never stops. This murder of Krasnodar, of the whole region. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to put a like and subscribe to my channel. На мой канал. Wait for it! There will be a frog show here. What's that? Frogs will be singing here. Yes, melodies, rhapsodies. So it never gets boring here? Never.